Excel Module 3 Analyzing Data Using Formulas. We're going to work on Skills Review, so go ahead and open Excel 3-2. And the first thing we want to do is get the first quarter revenue of January, February, and March. In the past, we would go to Auto Sum or Alt Equals, and it would ask us for the equal sum B3 through D3. Three, and then we would use our check mark and drag it down. But there's another way that you can quickly add multiple columns and rows. So select the area that you want to be added. And there's two ways. One, you would want the, the totals at the bottom of each, or you want them on each row. So you'll click the quick, quick tool analysis, click totals, and here's the two if you wanted it below, or if you want it to the right and that's the one we want so we'll select that one the next thing we'll do is we'll go into G3 which is percent increase for this one what we want to do is find the difference between the first quarter for this new year and what the first quarter was for the previous year and then to find the the increase the percent increase it would be divided by the difference divided by the previous year so equals and we'll put in parentheses that you want E3 minus F3, close your parentheses, and then divide by F3, and then check mark. And we this is in decimal place, so we want to put it in percent. And we want it, instead of rounded, we want to increase it so it's two decimal places. And then we can use our fill handle. And then we'll click in H3. Now H3, de depending on this target amount, 10%, we want to see, did they meet it? So in, did they meet the 10% here? No. In the next one, yes. So we're going to create a logical statement. So in H3, you can click FX in the formula bar or go to formulas and press it here. Make sure that you have the category logical. And then choose if and OK. So the formula is, you're telling it to look at G3. So if G3 is greater than or equal to that amount in B10, that 10%, um, and it's always going to look at that cell, so make sure you do that F4 so it has a dollar sign before and after the B. And if it's true, this one is not going to be true, but if it's true, it would be met. And if it was false, missed and the very first one will be missed. And then click OK, and then use your fill handle. So that's the logical statement. And you can see that the ones that are over 10% are met. Okay. Now the next one, you ha they have to meet two criteria. It has to be met in column H, and it has to be have a quality rating of four or more. So it has to be both. So this is a different type of logical function. It's an AND. So in J3, click the FX, or insert function, um, and is the first one, so I'll click OK. So in here, I'm looking at H3. So if H3 equals, and I'm going to type it wrong first. If I have met, I'm going to type it wrong for a second, and then I'll come back. Do you see how it comes up in red? That's usually an indication of an error. Well, when you want it to look for something specific, you have to have an open and closing quotation mark for met. Now it works, and this is going to be false because we already know that it's not met. It's missed. And then the other thing is I3, the, the, uh, in column I3, it has to be greater than or equal to 4. And then we'll click OK. And we'll use our fill handle. So this one, definitely anything that's missed is not is going to be false. And then um, if you have METs, it'll only be true if it's four or more, which it is. And this one, four or more. And this one, four or more. So perfect. Click Insert. And we'll go to Text and choose Header Footer. And then we'll go to footer. So at the center of footer, type your name. And to get out of the footer, click any cell. And I usually go back to view and choose normal. So we go back to normal and control home. Gets us back to the beginning. Okay. 
in B12, we want an um, in B12, we want the sum of everything that is in column E. So you can do your auto sum. So if I go back home and do my auto sum, make sure you select the range of B3 to B9 and then enter. On that one, could you just undo Control Z? They don't want the sum, they want the average. Click the auto sum down button and choose average and it should be E3 to E9. There you go. To round this average that you just take have taken from E3 to E9, click up in the formula bar and type round open parentheses, go to the end, and we want it um, rounded with no decimal places and close parentheses. So then we'll go into the accounting format and then it doesn't fit so double click so you can see everything and take two decimal places so it rounded for us and it's in the accounting format. In B11 we want to know how many these are the labs, how many labs there are. So we'll do a count function so equals and start typing count and then you'll see count A come up and select that and the range is B A3 to A9 and it should be 7 and then we'll click we want to have anything that's showing in the percent increase as a negative to show up in red. So select the range and its percentage, click the down arrow, go to more number formats and for decimal percentage we only have decimal places to change so go to custom and we want to change the type so click in where it says type and you want to add a semicolon bracket red close the bracket and then in parentheses, parentheses 0 0.00 percent close parentheses and anything in the negative will now be red and we just want to make sure it's decimal places and I don't know why I put a five in there oh it's supposed to be percent sign there we go next we want to do some formatting some basic formatting so select B9 all the way to F9 and then I'm going to let go and hold control but I already did it if you haven't done it already for B12 they should all be the accounting format and no decimal places because they're all zero zero then we'll click in D3 I'm sorry D12 and type report date and then I just press tab and for formula there is actually one for date and time so choose today and you'll get today's date when you click OK and then we they don't want today's date so press delete then go back to date and time and we're actually going to put in our own date so we'll put in the year first 2021 the month is April and the day is 3 select both D and E12 and go back to the home under cell styles choose rows 20% accent 1 and then we'll select A1 just to go back. So we have completed everything for the first quarter worksheet and now we're going to go into um, formula documentation worksheet and in here we want to create a stacked fraction so click insert symbol equation and if you select fraction it's actually the first one stacked and I'm just gonna make mine a little bit bigger to work with and we'll make it larger as we go along but click the top square first before you start typing and then you'll begin typing and then minus So as you're typing revenue, don't press the space bar. Just press the minus key. Don't press the space bar again. It'll do it for you. I just wanted to make sure you, you let the, um, it'll put in the space for you. Then when you're ready for the bottom part, make sure you click that bottom square. 
So I'm just going to widen it to as far as I need to see everything. Just make sure that you have no typo so that you won't get in trouble. I've just noticed that I didn't have my closed parentheses here because you want it to minus first before you divide. So make sure you have that open and closed parentheses on the top part, the numerator. And then look for the four arrows when you hover over the border and you're going to drag it over to A9 and then click A1, so that's the active cell. Go back to quarter one, uh, first quarter, the worksheet first quarter. So with the first quarter worksheet activated, click the File button. On the very, very bottom of the toolbar on the left-hand side, choose Options and then select from the Excel options formulas and then under workbook calculation we're going to select manual and then OK and then click in B3 and we're going to type the amount 7200 and then when you press enter so when you put in the 7200 and press enter, it did not change the value for the first quarter. It didn't change any of the values. So what you would have to do is recalculate alt equals and make sure you select each range. Now the amount changed, it didn't do it here as well. Click in the formula. It's the same formula, just um, activate it and press enter. So now it changed and then you'd have to do the same thing here. Now it's met, and the same thing on bonus. Just activate the cell. And um, why would you want to do it that way? Not sure. So again, we'd have to activate this and press enter. So everything changes. Um, then go back to File, Options, and change it back from formulas where you did it automatic, from manual to automatic, and then click OK. Not sure why you'd want to do that. It would be a lot easier if we just typed the number in here and press entered and everything that was associated with that cell would have been manual, automatically corrected for us. So if for, for this assignment, if you didn't go back to file and change that options for the formula and you kept it on automatic, that would have been fine with me. So if I just go back to those steps to show you that, um, so we can see the amount for the first quarter and it's on met and true. So if I just go back just to show you if we didn't do that feature. So we were on the first quarter and if I want to make sure that I am on the options for automatic formulas, perfect. So now when I type in the 7200, watch what happens when I press enter to the first quarter, to the um, Mr. Met, and then the bonus. It did it automatically. So that's what you would want it to do. Why did they want you to turn it off? Not sure, but just wanted to share that with you. That was from the textbook. So that's the save and submit. Thank you.